Hey, welcome to another Innovation Production. I'm very excited to showcase today the brand new Arturia Mini Lab 3. Now here's the story behind this. A few weeks ago, I just randomly googled Mini Lab MK3 and all I could find were forum posts dating back to over a year ago talking about how Arturia may release the MK3 because it's been a long time. A little over a week ago, I just randomly googled Mini Lab MK3 again and guess what? I found that it had just been released and there were some videos on YouTube. I was so excited I couldn't wait to get my hands on one. I had previously purchased the Minilab MK2. In fact, I owned it on two occasions and I got rid of it. It was a really nice keyboard, but I was going through a phase of gas gear acquisition syndrome where I was buying lots and lots of uh, MIDI keyboards, full sized and, and mini MIDI keyboards. Today I'm going to tell you how they made the Minilab MK2, which was a good keyboard, into a great one in the Minilab 3. First of all, the legendary good looks. The Minilab MK2 actually looked quite good, but this one looks even better. It's sleeker, it's smaller, and it's got these rounded edges. Even though it's all plastic, it's got really good build quality, all the way from the encoders to the faders, which feel really good to the pads and to the keys. Now the keys are really nice. All of Arturia's mini keys, in my experience, have been really nice. So I'm talking about the mini lab, I'm talking about a key step. It's got these keys that go over the edge, okay? And just like its predecessor, it's got the function keys here, it's got the pitch and mod strips here, it's got the eight LEDs, and it also includes Analog Lab Intro, which is the light version of Analog Lab. It's got over 400 presets, it's a really great sound library. It also comes with MIDI Control Center, which is a software by Arturia that you can use to customize everything on this keyboard. Now how they made the Mini Lab 3 to be a great keyboard is the additions they've made to it. So first of all, you can see here, there's a LED display with a selector knob here. Now it's a very tiny display, which is similar to other mini MIDI keyboards in its price range, but it's functional, you can read it. Now adding this selector here, which you can scroll through different menus and different settings, adds a lot more functionality to this keyboard. Now instead of 16 encoders, it's now got 8 encoders and it's got 4 faders. It does have less encoders than the Minilab MK2, but it's fine, you don't really miss it. Now at the back, you can see over here, it's got a USB-C connector now, which is great. And it's also got 5-pin MIDI. So for everyone out there who's got synthesizers, groove boxes, and other devices with MIDI connections, you can use this to control them without a need for a computer. This now has transport controls and integration with Live, Reason, Bitweek, FL Studio, and Logic, which is great. This now has an arpeggiator function which brings it in line with other mini keyboards in this price range. To activate, shift and tap up, arpeggiator on. Also hold function. Hold off. To change the arpeggiator modes, you just press shift hold down up and you've got the different modes here you might not be able to see it properly but it's got mode division swing gate rate sync and octave so let's change to mode the division swing gate beats per minute and let it sync and octave there you go this also has a chord function hold down shift and press hold and off so there you go, the Mini Lab 3. Whether you're a beginner looking for your first keyboard or a seasoned musician looking for something portable they can throw in a backpack and use it on the go, this is an ideal keyboard with some really good features. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.